Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the great state of Missouri. More specifically, today we are in Branson, Missouri, and even more specifically than that, I am here in front of the Hollywood Wax Museum. Now, it's the chain of wax museums. We have one in Hollywood, of course, one in Pigeon Forge, and one in Myrtle Beach, and of course, one here in Branson, Missouri. Kind of the two major, uh, or I guess there would be three major uh, wax museum uh, chains. Of course, you have Madame Tussauds, you have Hollywood Wax Museum, and you have Louis Tussauds, which is owned by the Ripley's companies. And I love checking out all, all three of those. I love wax museums in general. I've been to every wax museum in the United States of America, unless there is a secret wax museum hiding somewhere that I have not yet experienced. But I always like to check back in and see what the new figures are, what the new displays are. And it's been a few years since I've had a chance to stop here at the Hollywood Wax Museum here in Branson, Missouri. So I figured while I was here in Branson, we would stop at the old Wax Museum and see what is happening. Please follow me. And yes, there are a lot of interesting and flashy buildings along the Branson Strip here, and this is definitely a standout. You've got the massive Hollywood sign out in front. You've got King Kong himself climbing up the tower there. Out here in the fountain in front, you've got a Oscar, the uh, grandest award for anyone in Hollywood. And just look at Kong up there on top of the building destroying an airplane with it showing his vicious giant gorilla teeth and next to the building there we have the hollywood rushmore we have charlie chaplin marilyn monroe elvis presley and john wayne do you guys think this is an appropriate hollywood rushmore who would you put in your hollywood rushmore leave a comment in the comment section but as we enter the wax museum you see there is another Kong on the inside. You can get your uh, photo taken with him as he clasps you in his hand. And we enter the museum here right in front of that iconic Chinese theater there. And we have the handprints on the ground, much like, much like the actual Chinese theater. George Clooney there, Tom Hanks. I don't know if these are, yeah, most likely these are replicas taken from the original Prince Judy Garland there, nine, or 1935, says for Mr. Grauman. Yes, it was called. Yeah, it was called Grauman's Chinese Theater. Put her hands there and her ruby slippers right there. And of course, two of Hollywood's biggest stars, Mr. Seth Rogen and the uh, beautiful uh, Sandra Bullock. And there we have the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And it is interesting, I guess, in Hollywood, one of the most important things that can happen to you is having your name put on the ground, whether it's in front of the Chinese Theater or on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which actually does run in front of the Hollywood Theater in real life as well. And who do we have here on the Walk of Fame? None other than Miss Whitney Houston. For, uh, known for her rendition of I Will Always Love You. Took a Dolly Parton song and kind of made it her own. I think I like both versions. They're, they're, they're good in, uh, in their own way. Next up, we have Jackie Chan. Now, I would be very intimidated if someone was making this, this martial arts pose at me. Made me think they're about ready to give me the punch of death or kick my head off, but uh, Jackie Chan with his infectious smile. I, I can't even, I can't even be worried, even if he is going to tear out my larynx. Here we are, Tiffany's and Co. We have Audrey Hepburn having a breakfast at Tiffany's, which is the best movie 
ever made about eating breakfast in a jewelry store. Of course, what I love about the Hollywood Wax Museums is they give you props to uh, to play with. We're here with uh, with Audrey Hepburn. We're having breakfast at Tiffany's, having donuts and coffee here at Tiffany's. You want some? You want some donut? Nom 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 nom. Oh, one more bite. Nom 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 nom. All right. Audrey said she's had enough donut. Oh, but she is thirsty. She wants to drink some coffee. Glug 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 glug. Here, I'll drink some coffee too. Glug glug glug. Glug 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 glug. Oh, a little more. What's on mine? Glug 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 glug. Oh, she wants she wants another bite of donut. Nom 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 nom. Have uh, Miss Halle Berry over here, and they do give you these very informative plaques to kind of tell you about the uh, the person that the figure is representing. So, for instance, you know, I didn't know Halle Berry was from Cleveland. Ohio. I wonder if uh, wonder if she ever goes and visits Balto. And here we have two uh, more martial arts icons here. Have uh, Bruce Lee, one of the uh, most renowned kung fu artists of all time, getting ready to uh, crack my skull open there with his trademark nunchucks. And then Lucy Liu over here ready to throw a kick into my face. Yeah, I remember her, she was in uh, Kill Bill, and I think uh, Uma Thurman chopped the top of her head off. You see the Hollywood sign over top us as we enter Rap Street. Yeah, virtual who's who of rapsters here. We have uh, Mr. Tupac there, who's wearing a very interesting leather corset. And here hanging out at the coffee pot, we have Marshall Mathers, also known as Eminem, also known as Slim Shady. I think, is this the 8 Mile version of Eminem? Because he has his dark hair. I don't know, I always think of Eminem as having that uh, blonde hair from uh, his, early, his early albums. And here in front of the detective agency, we have Little Wayne. I saw him recently, he was on uh, WrestleMania. He, uh, he did, did some, some rapping and actually, um, it was, it, I did not enjoy it. I don't know, I'm not very, that familiar with his work, but uh, from his, uh, what he did at WrestleMania was, may, was not great. One, maybe, just, maybe just having an off day. If, he, if, he's, if he's normally better than he was at WrestleMania, leave a comment in the comment section. And over here, coming out of the hospital, we have Mr. Snoop Dogg. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's healthy. I don't know why he had to visit the hospital. He was having some sort of uh, Illness, but I don't know. He looks, he looks pretty, pretty healthy to me. Don't you guys think? Here we have Miss uh, Oprah Winfrey inviting me to uh, to take a seat. I guess I am uh, invited to be a guest on uh, on her show. So you do see the prop stations have props. I remember. I think last time I was here, it was still uh, during the pandemic, so uh, they did not have prop stations. The props are back. We got some props here, we got some bunny ears, we got a robe to pose with, oh no, not, not you. Q, this, this whole situation is making me, making me very uncomfortable. So we have Chris Pratt from Jurassic World, we've got a giant snake, and for the prop station we have a hard hat. All right Chris, I've been hard at work at, uh, at building the dinosaur pens. I think I think they're all ready. Oh no, I forgot to finish the, the pad for the giant snake. The giant snake's gotten out. Oh, look at that. Now he's, oh, he's killing me. No, no, no. Now they're blasting the theme to Lucy in this room. Uh, here she is with her Vita, 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 there. Oh, Lucy. And here we are with Mr. Charlie Chaplin, who was the last person to be able to wear that mustache before Hitler ruined it for everyone. I guess Michael, Michael Jordan did, did don the uh, Hitler stash for a short period of time. Of Bill Murray over in the corner and see the prop station has a Bill Murray hat. Which, did he wear that hat in like a movie or something? 
I, I don't know what, I don't know which Bill Murray this is supposed to be. I guess Bill Murray with hat. Yeah, Bill, you sure are some great hats. And here we have Keanu Reeves. I don't know if he's supposed to be uh, Neo from The Matrix, or maybe he's supposed to be John Wick, or uh, maybe he's supposed to be Ted from Bill and Ted. Mr. Patrick Stewart getting ready to beam up here. Here are the uh, controls on which to beam him. Then I guess we gotta throw on uh, one of these shirts so that we can beam with him. Beam me up, Patrick Stewart. So we got Arnie here as the Terminator. He's got his, the rough shape, got his face peeled off, got his chest peeled off. And then back here, this is Robert Patrick who played the T-1000. He was kind of a, a man made of mercury that could change into all sorts of, uh, all sorts of different uh, shapes. But uh, yeah, yeah, Robert, it says Robert Patrick right there. And uh, potentially he was in some other movies as well. Tej's Garage here from The Fast and the Furious. And there we have Paul Walker who was in those movies and uh, passed away, oddly enough, in a car accident. Kind of ironic given that uh, the movies were about car racing. Here's Mr. Vin Diesel next to his motorcycle. He was also in the Fast and Furious movies. Oh, and our prop station here. Oh, we just have like wrenches. All right, so what do we do with the wrench? Vin Diesel, you better do what I say or I'll hit you in the face with this wrench. Smash, smash. Oh my gosh, it is bloody. What the heck? This room here is shaped like a giant disco ball and full of pop musicians. There's Cardi B. You see she has a giant tattoo of a flamingo on her leg there. I wonder in the wax, in the wax museum, I wonder if they have to keep up with if the celebrities get new tattoos and they have to go back and add them to the figures. Miley Cyrus here, she has a bunch of little tattoos on her arms as well. Like a skeleton with a crown and a dog head. I, I guess these are her actual tattoos. And then this is Ariana Grande. Looks like she only has tattoos on her fingers. But this guy here, he's, he's all about all about those tattoos. Yeah, I wonder if they have to come in here and put some new tattoos on Post Malone's face whenever he goes out and gets one done. I feel like he has more than this in real life now. Looks like Biebs here, looks like he's got some work done. I don't know why I'm just focusing in on all their tattoos. But uh, yeah, some nice tats there, Biebs. So I have bees in the trap, bees, bees in the trap. Bees in the trap, bees, bees in the trap. I guess we head through this tunnel here out of the disco ball. Oh my gosh, just got jump scared by uh, just, I seriously, he spooked me for some reason. I saw Justin Timberlake peering over my shoulder. Yeah, this section is almost like a hall of mirrors here. Got pink hiding in the hall of mirrors as well. And looks like uh, we're heading upstairs. Oh, there's Katy Perry. But uh, upstairs we go. All right, headed up the stairs. Oh, looks like we're in some sort of comedy club here. We're at the uh, the improv, the improv, or the comedy cellar here, and some some famous uh, comedians here, which is uh, Ben Ben Still. I remember him from uh, from Zoolander, where he played Zoolander. And then Kevin Hart. And I don't think I've ever seen a movie with him in it. You got Robin Williams there, the beloved Robin Williams in his uh, classy purple velvet coat. And uh, you have Will Ferrell in his non-classy money covered coat. Did he actually wear this coat at some point? That's, I, 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 I mean, it seems like something he would do. I just don't remember seeing him in it. Got Eddie Murphy there and then Adam Sandler here pointing at his face and screaming which yeah that seems like that seems like him he does does a lot of uh, a lot of screaming maybe not as much pointing at his face but a lot of yelling in his movies well, it looks like we're entering like 
a Wild West section here. Oh, I didn't see you standing there, Taylor. Guess we got Taylor over here in the uh, Wild West section. I'm gonna send this picture to Anna and tell her that I met Taylor Swift. And they do have this shooting gallery here. It's like an old cabin. And we are in luck because it's actually set on free play so we can blast till our heart's content. All right, having some trouble hitting the targets here. Did that do something? All right, is there something in that barrel? Let's see if we can hit it. Oh, I don't think the aim is great on these. There we go. Yeah, there's a raccoon in that barrel. I know this skunk's gotta do something. Skunks always do something. Come on. Oh, this is hard to hit. There we go. A little blast of air came out of the skunk. There's a squirrel on the roof. Let's see if we can, see if he does something. Come on, come on, squirrel. There we go. He's doing his wacky squirrel dance. That's pretty cool. A little behind the scenes exhibit here on how wax figures are made. That's actually Johnny Depp right there. That's like the, the they carved in clay. There it is, uh, made out of the mold, turned into wax. They insert the very long hair and beard there. You have a very long bearded Johnny Depp. And then uh, they uh, twist his uh, long beard into a weird pirate beard. Heading into the saloon as we walk past John Wayne here. Turns out his real name was Marion all along. And also he said some really horrible, indefensible things. And this saloon is full of amazing country singers. Some of the greats here, Willie Nelson, of course, Dolly Parton. I always think of uh, Pigeon Forge with, uh, when I think of Dolly, but Dolly has some attractions over here. She has uh, yeah, the Dolly Parton Stampede, formerly known as the Dixie Stampede. And then Mr. Johnny Cash, one of the greatest uh, country musicians of all time. And this guy's name is Luke. Brian, I'm guessing he is a more modern uh, country singer. I've actually never heard of him. You have all these country singers here in the saloon, but they better watch out because Jamie Foxx has gone crazy. He's here blasting away with, uh, with his pistols. Oh, we got a prop station, some microphones, and a cowboy hat. Islands in the stream, that is what we are. No one in between, how can we be wrong? Sail away with me to another world. We can rely on each other. Uh-huh. From one lover to another. Uh-huh. have Bob Marley over here strumming the guitar. And over at his prop station, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna forego this one. It just somehow feels inappropriate. have Clint Eastwood back in here, one of the Western greats. Here he is with his uh, his trademark cigarello. And uh, interestingly enough, apparently uh, he hated having to have the cigarello in his mouth. He apparently didn't like it, so it made him sick and he had to hold it so it like blew in his face. That's why he made all these, <laughs> all these faces like this, because he just hated having the cigarello in his mouth. There's Dale Earnhardt, one of the NASCAR greats. And uh, let's let's uh, explore the prop station. Will this hat? Will this hat make me as good a race car driver as you, Dale? Uh oh, what's in this mysterious cavern here? Oh, there we go. The man himself, Indiana Jones. In the prop station. We do have a hat. Sadly, uh, no whip. I guess they don't want us whipping the wax figures. Marilyn Monroe here says, you belong among the stars. This archway, for some reason, reminds me of uh, the Looney Tunes symbol. Anyone else see it? Oh, I'm pretty sure this is, this is brand new. Have Bruno Mars here. Look at this wall of uh, TVs. This is pretty fun. I, I honestly, I don't know that much about Bruno Mars. I don't know that much about his music. But this is a pretty amazing uh, display here. This, these uh, TVs, wow. Yeah, that's fun. That's a lot of fun. Oh, these cemetery gates can only mean one thing. About ready to head into the Chamber of Horrors. Oh, there we have Boris Karloff, who played 
Frankenstein, the monster that was the son of a doctor who was also named Frankenstein that named his son Frankenstein because that was their, both their last name because technically he was his son. And then here's uh, his wife. She doesn't have a name. Well, prop station, we got a lab coat there. All right, so I am Dr. Frankenstein wearing this very tiny lab coat. Uh, I am your father. Why, why don't you love me? I did my best. I, I found all the best corpse pieces, put them together to make the best son ever. And uh, you, still, you still despise me. Honestly, I don't know if I can get this coat off. Oh my gosh, Maybe over the, over the top. No, that's not gonna work, okay. Okay, I'm starting to panic here. That, there we go. Just gotta burn it out of it. Here you have the Predator. Looks like he's uh, got a human spine there that he pulled out of, uh, pulled out of some human. And there is the Xenomorph. Of course, the xenomorph's reproductive cycle, the xenomorph lays an egg. The egg hatches a face hugger. The face hugger attaches to your face and makes a little tiny xenomorph grow out of your, jump out of your chest. And then it grows incredibly fast. It turns into a towering monster, which presumably lays another egg. That's very complicated. You know, most, most uh, reproductive cycles aren't that complex. But uh, what props do we have here? Oh, look at this. We actually have a face hugger as a wearable prop. Sadly, I, the band won't go all around my face. So I guess I just have to like put it on my forehead there. Oh no. Oh, my stomach hurts. <laughs> no. Now this is super cool. As we head down into the chamber of horrors, and on this super spooky staircase. And look who's looking at us from the rafters. You got Chucky, his bride there. It's the Phantom of the Opera. Oh, I just noticed the mummy. The mummy across the way over on that balcony staring at us. And if you look past the chandelier, there's Dracula up there. There's so many monsters glaring at us at the same time. It's very, very unsettling. And uh, there's another mummy over here as we're headed down. Also a super spooky skeleton there. And who's over here warming up by the fireplace? Oh, it's the, it's the Murder Brothers. It's uh, Jason Voorhees. And over here we got Michael Myers. Let's see what we have as far as props go. Oh, it's a pumpkin. Yes, Michael, I hope you're having a super spooky Halloween season. It's almost halfway. Over here we have Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And over at the prop station we have an, an axe. I mean, I kind of was expecting a chainsaw to be honest. I don't remember the uh, Texas Axe Massacre, but uh, we'll have to make do. Oh, who's over here under the staircase? And the little Harry Potter room. Well, that's not Harry Potter. That's uh, that's Billy, the puppet from uh, from Saw. And oh, he's not alone down here. Also hiding in a little cranny here is the Crypt Keeper. Well, uh, Mr. Crypt Keeper, we really need to talk about something. Um, we really need to get Tales from the Crypt on streaming. I know, I know, I can watch it on Netflix, but. Uh, it's just, it's, it's low quality. Uh, we need to get on a streaming service. I'm sure there's lots of other people who want, uh, who want to see it. And, uh, oh, I just realized here, Billy is, is apparently he's filming me. You can see I'm actually on the television sets there. Why, what, why, why are you filming me, Billy? It's Elvira, mistress of the dark there, offering you to uh, take a seat next to her. And then some other spooky figures over here in these little uh, closets. And you got Mr. Hannibal Lecter there. Luckily he is wearing that mask so he can't uh, 
ER liver with uh, fava beans and a nice Chianti. And there is uh, the uh, the ghost face from Scream, AKA the easiest wax figure to put together. <laughs> and then over here is, uh, I always, thought, I always thought this guy was the devil when I saw the wax figures, but apparently his name is Darkness. But I don't know, you can't fool me. He looks pretty devilish. And then from the classic film, Nacho Libre, we have Jack Black, who played Nacho. And the prop station has his cape. Sadly, they do not have the Lucha Mask. Darn. This nice cozy cave here. And cuddle up next to Mr. Sean Connery. That's an awful warm hat. Do you have, do you have one for me? Ah. You know, Sean Connery, I'm starting to have second thoughts about trying all these strange hats on, given that there's literally strangers coming through here all day, putting them on their heads and spreading mass disease. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've, I've, I've never gotten a disease from a wax museum. So the gold record on the floor, the disco ball in the air. So we have some uh, musicians in here. We saw some of the more modern pop musicians. Here's some more classic musicians, such as Mr. Eddie Mercury, his trademark mustache, and a uh, very unique dental structure, which he thought gave him the, the uh, power to sing. That's why he never fixed his teeth, because he's afraid it would change his voice. Here we have Jacko, and I learned a long time ago, if you don't have anything nice to say, you don't say nothing at all. Mirrors here actually add a pretty cool effect. You can see me being reflected a million times, and then you can see Eddie Mercury being reflected a million times. And that's why the lady is a tramp. I would definitely put Elvis up there as one of the most popular wax figures. He's in nearly any wax museum. Shred away, Prince. Shred away. The hallway here we have uh, a list of how tall different celebrities are. I did not know that Judy Garland was uh, only four foot eleven. I think a lot of a lot of celebrities, for whatever reason, I think are shorter than uh, than you would think they are. Mark Wahlberg, five eight. Nicole Kidman, five eleven. So she is actually pretty tall. And apparently, um, Ashton Kutcher is a towering giant. And who is this? I don't know who this man is. Oh, that's Chris Hemworth, I'm sorry. But I don't know how tall he is. We have Tom Hanks here. Let's see what the prop station gives us. Oh, okay. So we're filming, uh, filming a scene here in a Tom Hanks movie. Castaway 2, Return of Wilson, take one. See the rippling muscles of John Cena there? And I guess we can do a little workout with him. What's wrong, John? These weights too heavy for you? Now we enter the museum on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and we have returned some celebrities standing here in front of the Chinese theater. So a similar scene to what we saw when we first entered. And that's actually the sign of the original Hollywood Wax Museum, the one in Hollywood. And then I think across the street is the uh, Guinness World Records. I think it's on the opposite side of the street. That's the last Guinness World Records uh, museum in the United States. And our prop station here gives us some Academy Awards to give away. So I'm gonna give the award to Michael B. Jordan for being the world's greatest basketball player. You know, I don't really follow, you know, Academy Awards, who wins what, or who's won anything, but did you win something for The Shining? Because I really think you deserve it. The Shining was great. Did you win, you maybe did win one for The Shining, but if you didn't, here's, here's another. I do wanna say, the wax figures here are very, very realistic. You can see the individual pieces of stubble here on uh, Hugh Jackman. Sadly, we don't get to see his Wolverine mutton chops. That would be awesome. So yes, Captain Jack Sparrow, captain of the Black Pearl, and this Jack here was captain of the Titanic. Oh, Men in Black, got some props here. Oh, we got some cool sunglasses. So the difference between me and you and you is that I make this look 
good. Our final room here in the Wax Museum, a wedding chapel where you can get married to Bradley Cooper while he's drunk. Yes, Bradley Cooper, it's time to kiss the bride. Wait, you're not, you're not, you're not supposed to touch the figures. You're, 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 not, you're not supposed to touch the figures. Now it is time to exit to the gift shop. Okay, here in the gift shop you can purchase an Academy Award. And they have ones for all occasions. Best dad. I'm going to get this for my dad. I'm going to get this for my sister. I'm going to get this for my grandma. I pretty much got my Christmas shopping all finished right here. While we were in there, the sun fell. The neon lights were lit. You can even see King Kong there illuminated against the evening sky. Everyone driving here along the parkway in Branson, admiring the Hollywood Rushmore and the mighty Kong. And they do have a mini golf next door, kind of a Hollywood mini golf with some of the iconic structures from Hollywood. You can see another rendition of the Chinese theater back there. I think this is the Hollywood Bowl, but I'm not sure who this guy is. I guess maybe he's some paparazzi spying on celebrities with his binoculars. Looks like this guy's just been doing some shopping out in Beverly Hills. So thank you for joining me here today at the Hollywood Wax Museum here in Branson. It's always fun to check in and see what the wax figures are up to. See what's new, what's different, what's been changed. But uh, you know, always a good time acting a little stupid and playing with the uh, with the prop stations. Always get always get a kick out of this type of uh, wax museum. But thank you so much for watching these videos. If you do like these videos, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Also, uh, you know, do those other things. Comment, thumbs up, ring a bell, whatever it takes. I appreciate the support. If you like these videos, I travel around the country filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If you subscribe, it'll let you know when new stuff is available. And uh, if you'd like to help support the channel in other ways, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more, get your postcard once a month from me to you. Also uh, selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and doing personalized messages on Cameo. And of course, all those things help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag. Kong lives. <laughs>